Well, don't you just remember when you were little and you used to take Jean Jacket into the stable and you let him suck you up real good? What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Screenshots, the Drinking Game Movie Podcast. Nope. Jordan Peele. A lot of us have been ready for this movie to come out. We've been expecting it to be great. We're really excited, and Jordan Peele has a great track record. He's been doing amazing stuff with all his films, and they usually always have some kind of cultural commentary added to it. But a lot of people are also expecting him to eventually flop and mess up one of his films. And is this the one? It, is there some cultural commentary to this one, or is it just simply a good UFO movie? Guys, nope. Johnny, what's it about? What's it making? Uh, listen, forget about all the stuff that he just said, because I want to spread awareness, because um, Mark is a big fan of the movie Morbius, right? Mm, okay. Uh-huh. And after he watched Morbius, he wanted to adopt that character's personality, and he wanted to look like a vampire, which is why for about seven months now, he's been depriving himself of the sun, <laughs> and it was very, very hard to convince him to come out and see Nope, because he would have to go outside, so we actually had to get a screening at night. So that he wouldn't have to go out, and we so we went to a midnight screening of this. Yeah. <laughs> Are you gonna say anything? No. What the hell? Are you doing just because of the fucking color grading? I'm not, I don't. I'm just concerned about your health. I'm I'm healthy, Johnny. Don't worry about it. Your your skin says otherwise. Damn. When Johnny tans, he be- turns yellow. Johnny uh, turns yeah. yellow. You call me a coward? Yeah, yeah I am <laughs> calling you a coward. You You're fucking me yellow y- bellied. Yellow? Yeah, yellow. I yellow. Have a yellow belly. Got you on UFO, by Ye- the way. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ already. All right, Johnny, what's it about? What's it making? I'm so happy we got through that fucking unnecessary minute and a half bit about me liking Morbius. Yeah, like, they're up. so unnecessary. Well, first of all, everybody and we also every- got you. Out of everybody board, likes so Morbius. You take a shot. Ah, so, anyway, Nope <laughs> is Jordan Peele's Thrice movie. And um, it's been very uh, anticipated. It's two hours and 10 minutes. It's a horror, mystery, sci fi thriller. It's more of just a mystery, sci fi thriller. Even kind of Western at some points. Um, not In feel, not like an archetype or, anything, or plot or anything. Um, but it's the logline is, the residents of a lonely gulch in inland California bear witness to an uncanny and chilling discovery. Clankety, clankety, clank. I'm sorry. I'm and sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, this movie uh, um, is coming in to be his uh, Jordan Peele's second highest uh, opening weekend. His highest being, I think, 71 uh, million and then his lowest being uh, like I think 22 um, this is coming in pr- uh, projections from box office pro were around 48 to 63 million this weekend but uh, now that the weekend estimates are coming out it looks like after it got like 6.4 uh, million in preview Thursday night previews it's probably going to land somewhere around 45 million which would be a very good uh, opening because I think the budget for this is around 50 or six between 50 sure. and 70 I would, I would guess um, really yes but um, I think it's somewhere around there, and I think it's definitely gonna make its money back. Um, is fifty and seventy? Does that budget norm average for like movies like this, or is that below? I feel like that's I low. Well, it's definitely not average for original concept movies today. What's what, what's average? I don't know. But like like Deadpool was, I think fifty eight million. Joker was fifty five. Okay. So, it's I mean it's technically not a big budget compared to like a two hundred million. Do- it's, it's pretty big budget. Yeah, it has to make it like two hundred million worldwide to break even. So um, anyway, what did you think about Nope? Hmm. Not okay. Well, li- like spoiler free, first ten minutes, right? Um, er, my first thoughts was that it's not what I expected. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> um, and I know you were avoiding trailers. Yes, and, and it was almost impossible to. Not it was yeah. yeah. It, it was really and. I should start doing that, and I don't. I should start avoiding trailers, but uh, I, I haven't um, before. I should probably start. But watching the trailers, I think, r- ruined it for me. Mm. I was expecting something different. I, I mean, we had a whole episode, which, we, by the way, we, we should definitely do another one in the future. We had a whole episode on UFO and alien movies. And... Oh. Nothing. Go. Continue. And <laughs> it, it was so much fun, because we love those movies. It's awesome. Like, how much time did you spend researching alien for... St- other shit, right? So I went into this expecting, expecting fucking one thing and got something different. So I don't want to say I was let down because I did have a good time. It was a good movie, but not what I, what, I, what I expected. What about you, Danny? I I did somehow avoid the trailers to the best I could. And I would say that once it was over, I had to like sit with it for a second because I remember right when it ended, I was like, I don't, he, he set me up. He was like, did you like it? And instead of saying, nope, I said, 
I don't really know. <laughs> so I totally it was like a five second pause. I'm like, oh, he's going to make the joke. And he goes, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Johnny, when he asked me if I liked it in text message, I was going to, I said nope, but before I did it, I fucking, I was so angry at him because I knew like mm. what he wanted me to say, yeah, but I did yeah. it anyway. Mm-hmm. Continue. Sorry. I feel like, but the more that I've sat with it and the more I've thought about it, like how much of a different take it is on the whole UFO thing, I, I enjoy it. I enjoyed it. Mm. I would see it again too. Really, you yeah, see it again? That yeah, I would soon? definitely see it again. Maybe not in theaters, but I'll, I would like to watch it again. For like, yeah, gotcha. And like, same with you. Like with the trailer, I avoided the trailers, and every time the trailer came on, the second trailer came on, I would leave the theater and yeah. come back. And literally, like hours before the screening, I see there's an Instagram thing oh, there, no. and the first thing on the Instagram thing is the big thing. Uh, I'm like, why are they putting that in? Like, the movie's not even out. I like, can't right. believe that happened. So that's, but that's you're, you're gonna have to go did, more. I don't think it ruined yeah, you it. Have to tell me what that big. Yeah, you have to go I'll more t- into I'll it. T- I'll tell you later. Yeah. But um, but anyway, um, I thought I really, I actually really, really enjoyed this, and I thought out of all of Jordan Peele's movies, this hit on like the, m- the most visceral level in terms of. Can you define? Because I'm stupid. Can you define visceral for me? Visceral means like, like hard tactile. Like okay. you can feel it. It's like gotcha. kind of violent. Um, that's to my uh, imagination. I, I'm sure I don't you're know right. I'm sure you're right. Something like that. But um, but I thought that, like, I was thinking about the movie. I'm like, oh yeah, that scene was like scary, and like there was a lot of tension. And I go, oh wait, no, that scene was too. And then I realized like that the whole movie has this has tension like a like a like a steel cable. Like yeah. I said like it's very very like the tension is very solid and it builds very very well. It's just that like, I don't sometimes the or, like the order or what they are showing us. Like, there's a, there's one p- plot line where you're like, I don't know how that connected to the story at all, except on a character level and maybe a thematic level. Yeah. It didn't really belong. But when you watch that plot line, you're like, that's the most, that's like the most horrifying thing ever. Is Even though, I don't know if it belonged in the movie, but all I do know is that it worked very, very well on an emotional level. Well, even even Jordan Peele, because I, 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 I didn't look for it. I, I fell upon an interview he did for this movie, and he was talking about the whole, you know, Jaws philosophy, where it's like, you got you got to build tension. Like horror movies, it's yes, unless this it's is Jaws, unle- this is Jaws with the sky. Unless it's a slasher, it should all be tension, right? Yeah. Um, and obviously, like that's obvious. Everyone knows that. Um, but I think the way you like, if you're watching a movie and you're saying to yourself, "Oh, they're building tension," the movie's not doing a good job. If you're watching a movie and you're not thinking about the writing and you're just like, "Fuck, fuck, 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 fuck," then it's doing a good job. Um. I, I hmm, how do I put it? everything you said? I agree with. Like, if I put myself in your shoes, I didn't feel the same the same way. Like the gravity I, to which you you might have felt felt that tension. Mm. I didn't feel that tension, and I think it's because the trailers. Honestly, um, like I don't want to put all my hate into. Oh, I watched the trailers and it ruined it, but it might deserve it. Like it actually, I think really ruined my experience. Mm. Yeah. That's interesting because I'm curious to know. Cause, I can tell you exactly why, the, too. Because tension really usually isn't based off of information. Well, I can. When we get into spoilers, I can explain okay. why. Um, let me see, let's see here. You know what? I, I thought Kiki Palmer was really good. I haven't seen her in a Whoa, movie yeah. since True Jackson VP. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And, yeah, and she was in this, and the, the main guy, Daniel Kalula, was like the most unenthusiastic man in the history of everything. Oh, yeah. And she crazy. contrasted very well with him. Oh, she was just like very outgoing. Is that the main actor's name? Daniel Kalu- yeah. Kaluuya. I think he's awesome. We'll, we'll get into yeah, that. He's very good. I feel like we'll get into more of that. But like where I felt the tension, I and I the times that I didn't feel the tension, I feel like it partially had. I'm not an actor, so I can't tell anyone how to act. But I feel like it had to do with the way that when either Johnny does people, it all the time. Uh, some people on the screen were like reacting i felt like i it made me feel the tension less too if it, if you know what i'm saying like, what do you mean with the way that, like when they were looking by at by the way something. that he acted like he was so well he was calm, so low key like, about yeah, it let yeah, me yeah. let me add to that um and this isn't really going to this isn't going to spoil it but like there comes a time in every movie where like the characters are like okay we get it yeah. this is this is us now and once ah, ha, ha, ah you idiot what did I say? you said us is that you re- have to say oh. the thing. Wait, why did you do that? Because Us was the title of his last movie. Oh, shit. Nobody, but you didn't use it in that context, but you still said it. You had to take a drink. Uh, right, I'm sorry right, to interrupt right. your thought. Well, I just got really what are they saying? Right, what was I saying? You were said, whenever characters in the movie realize, okay, this is the thing. This is okay, Us Okay, yeah. Now. Once that happens in a movie, <laughs> um, like when, when characters gain their courage or when they realize, like, it, 
oh, he, uh, Darth Vader is my father. It's like, spoiler, sorry. When there's <laughs> that moment of realization, I don't feel terror anymore. I feel like we're, mm. I'm a part of a team now, and we're all ready to ready to go. That's so, you, mean. you know what I mean? There's the, there's a, there's a tension in the mystery. There's a mystery in not knowing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, but so, I still think I still think it held up very well. Like after you sort of realize what's going on, I think instead of just showing us this, like in a lot of movies, like if there's a mystery, right? A lot the characters find out or solve what the mystery is, and then there's like another. There's another stage where they have to like kind of defeat that mystery or whatever. Yeah. And I think in this movie, they did it in a very smart way where they didn't re- the the scenes where they knew the mystery weren't the same or on the same level as before, where they actually did something new and innovative with that concept that they figured out. Oh yeah, by yeah, by the way, the most interesting take on UFOs. Yes, de- yes. Mm-hmm. I, I it took the like the con- not the concept like oh little green guys and they're you know putting stuff up our asses and stuff. But the concept of, like, we're seeing things in skies or whatever. Yeah. It took that concept and, like, made something very unique out of it. You know, out, out of, out of like, common... Look, because, like, in, like, a lot of... Uh, that's kind it's of... So, it's so hard. It took, it took, like, the common lore um, from, you know, the way UFOs are interact with people or technology. Who wrote this? Jordan Peele. He wrote it, too. Yeah. Wow. Um, the way that UFOs and, you know, kind of a- interact with people and technology in movies, but also yeah. in alleged quotations or real life accounts in quotations um, in real life. And it kind of used those and put those as kind of not plop, uh, just put them into the movie mm-hmm. to, uh, and did very unique things with them, which I really enjoyed. Yeah. Like in the, the interview that I fell upon uh, with Jordan Peele, he, and they, the interview was asking what their favorite UFO movies are. And of course, the same Close Encounters. I mean, Close yeah. Encounter is the quintessential UFO movie. Like, that's the shit. And it's my favorite anything extraterrestrial uh, movie. Um, I And I think maybe one of the reasons why I, the way, when, when we get to the rating, the reason why I'm going to rate uh, Nope the way I'm going to rate it is because I'm expecting them to, like, catch lightning in a bottle again, like they did with uh, Close Encounters. But. It's not going to... You're making me so nervous. You're making me so nervous. Um, but it's not going to happen. I kind of have to let that go. I'm making him nervous because I keep... I keep Every time he's talking, I keep eyeing up yeah. my words. Because, like, Steven cause Spielberg... To get, take a shot. Did you take your shot? I, I have the half one right here. Why is it half? Because you, I got dinged twice. Yeah. But you... you I did the full one. Oh, okay. I did the full one. This is the half one. Okay, good. Um, But Steven Spielberg uh, caught lighting in a bottle. That was so cool. And I... I want to be. Remember when I would talk to uh, any of the UFO people we'd have on the uh, MGC podcast about how I wish that I yeah. can go back to the time where we would uh, like it was more of a mystery and the government was less involved and we were like, "What the fuck's going on?" Now that UFOs, new UAPs, and stuff are so accepted, fuck what? What? He said UAP. <gasps> Holy shit, bro! <laughs> fuck. Also, like I like how we're talking about nope and 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 Marcos. Yeah, I miss the times where. Well, I was getting to a point. Had, I was getting to a point. The mystery, what, what, what we didn't know what UFOs were. So the point were. was, the point was, the mystery of uh, UFOs in the world, like that whole thing, made movies like this more interesting. But now that it's so widely accepted, I'm not as interested. Yeah, but it's not. It's not widely. Hold on. Fuck you. You're saying that the U like you're saying it like the yeah, UFO thing is solved. The UFO, like it's no, no, not solved, aliens. but the UFO phenomenon is more. Like talked about, it's accepted. A, yeah, but it's a giant mystery. It, yeah, but I don't know. It's I'm, still a giant mystery. It's not as interesting anymore. <laughs> Why? Because it became mainstream, and now you can't think it's interesting. Is this guy? Your yeah, alternative I, I, I see it all Shut the time. Johnny sucks. sucks. <laughs> Go ahead, Barker. What are you gonna say? Uh, no, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like this is just a nut. Like I have never personally, I've never thought of UFOs. In the way that this movie thought about them. Yeah. I don't know how I've never thought about it like that, but that's all I'm saying for now, obviously. But yeah. I don't know how I've never considered it this way com- compared to all the other ways, which mm. are, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, it's it, it's very creative. That's why I wanted to ask, like, yeah. oh, did Jordan Peele write this? Um, all, but although creative and although different in a, a way we haven't seen it before, um, not my favorite out of all the adapt- adaptations I've ever seen. Do you think this worked? Do you think that out of his three movies, wh- which one do you think had the best characters? Because I think this one might have the best characters. In all, like, alien movies? No, in, in a Jordan Peele's movies. In his three well, movies. I only saw Get Out in this one. 
Bro, what? You gotta dig him. Bro, you gotta what? Dig him. No you gotta dig him. Bro, what? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> you gotta dig him. No. So, He's hammered. So, you, should, you should be hammered yeah. right so, now. Oh, no. <laughs> but I, I, so I, when I, I think the characters worked very, very well in this movie. There wasn't a single scene where I'm like, oh, they're doing like the token, like this is where we get to the character thing. And I thought I really enjoyed them. And all their humor, there was no, like, even though it's a Jordan Peele movie, there's never really jokes in his movies. They all come from the characters. And there's there's like, laugh out loud moments in this that all come from character stuff, and they're not jokes, and I enjoyed that very well. Should we go to overall thoughts as you slam back that toxic uh, liquid? I can't believe you right now. You know, for the last fucking year and a half, Johnny's been getting the most shots, but for the last like three episodes of screenshots, I've been getting the most shots, and I'm not happy about it. Yeah. You're a piece of shit, Johnny. Yeah. I hate you so much. Yeah. You're becoming like Adam. Adam sets you up. He'll like say, oh, remember when they went to Chipotle in the, yeah, in the movie? I like I liked the, the, the bananas. And then you go, the bananas. And he goes, dang them. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you want to do overall thoughts? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So, overall thoughts. I'll just... Yeah. Go ahead. Ah, find wait, a good Instagram wait, starting happened? point. All right, here we go. So, my overall thoughts. Okay. I'll say in this. This is what I said in Letterboxd, my one-sentence review. Go ahead. Whether some stuff belongs in the movie or not, or or whether it, the way it's presented to us is a little awkward or not, I think that whatever we're shown in this movie works on an emotional level very well. That's the most concise I can make it. Mm. So I really, really enjoyed it. Okay. Danny? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> same as before, I guess. Nope. <laughs> nope. Nope. Uh, I'll, <laughs> I'll hold up. No. Same as before. I just, at first, I had to sit with it. Because it's like a little different, but the more that I've thought about it, I enjoyed it. All right, that was simple. Yeah. That was simple. Mark, um, I always have fun watching movies. Always, um, it's uh, and I definitely had fun for this one. Not my favorite Alien movie. Um, I think there's a lot of things that I I would have rather rather have seen. I think the trailers ruined a lot of it for me. Um, not what I expected. Wanted something different, but. Removing my own biases, removing all that, it is a good movie. It is definitely a good movie. Okay, good. So let's do let's do ratings. So, um, this is okay. So on a scale of cirrus, cirrostratus, stratus, cumulus, nimbus, oh, no. cirro cumulus, alto stratus, alto cumulus. Stratocumulus, Nimbostratus, and Communolimbus. What, did, what are these? What the fuck are you talking about? Are these about? planets? Pal. No. Solar systems? Oh, clouds. Clouds? Oh, I can't hear you through the headphones. Danny, you said clouds. God, the editor hates you. You piece of Dang him. Good. Fuck. I, don't, I know I Johnny's a dick. I was going to get you I know, he said it first. I know Johnny's a dick, anyway, but, like, but I'm happy it's not me. First. Well, she's not he on the thing. He set me up. <laughs> so... On a, so on a scale, so let's say Cirrus is one, Stratus is two, Cumulus is three, Nimbus is four, Cirro Stratus is five, Cirro Cumulus is six, Alto Stratus is seven, Alto Cumulus is eight, Strato Cumulus is nine, and Nimbo Stratus is ten. I have I'm not. No, I'm gonna this... give it. I'm gonna give it an Alto. I'm gonna give uh nope and. Alto stratus point strato stratus cumulus out of out of clouds. <laughs> <laughs> You're fucking scrolling through. So right, that's so okay. basically that translates to a seven point nine. But you have to write the stratus. I give it a yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. Come mula <laughs> nimbus cloud. A cum mula nimbus. Well, how much cloud. is that? That's a a cumulo nimbus. Uh, eight point two. No, it's a cum. It's a cum cum. Eight point two. Okay, but give, give, give me, give me the thing. <laughs> grog, I'll give it a grog, Skagulus. <laughs> Inside joke. Okay, I give mine... All right, wait. So, wait, if... So, you thought it was a great movie, Danny? Is, yeah. Is Soro Stratus number 10? Yeah. Okay. Whatever, right. I don't know. It doesn't matter. One. <laughs> Just fuck. Wait, Just you gave it Cumulo Nimbus? That's a one. Yeah. No, no, shut up. No, I it's, made that's that's a 8.2. <laughs> Alto Stratus None is... None of a, this means Alto anything. Alto Stratus is a right. seven. Alto Stratus is a yes. seven. Okay, then I give mine a stratomulus. Right. Strat- it's a, it's between stratocumulus and altocumulus for a 6.7. Jeez. All right. Yeah. Nice. You see, I could tell them what I got right the other day. What did you, you write? When I got 6.55, I guessed it dead on. Oh, yeah. Dead on. For what movie was that? One of them. 
Yeah. Thor. Was, was, Thor was Thor. Yeah. He got uh, whatever it was. Six. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Urgy. So 8.2, 7.9, 6.7. And when we cut, I got to get Danny a shot glass. Jumble that shit up, man. Jumble that shit up. You got to jumble that shit up. Got I'm going to say. <laughs> You're really good at this. Seven. Seven. Seven point. Seven point sixty? No, 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 no. Yeah, no. Seven point fifty-eight. Seven point fifty-eight. What's it? What's it? What is it though? What is it? Jesus, what is right. it? All right. So, it, a seven point fifty-eight. It'd be an alto stratus point. Uh, zero stratus. Alto cumulus. <laughs> cumulus, nice, yeah. very good. So we give it a scurrily cumulus out of ten. A scurrily cumulus out of ten. Guys, All right, should we go to spoilers? Fantastic, awesome. All right, uh, go see this movie. Everyone, spoilers. And it's also a win for original movie making. It's gonna make a bunch of money. Sweet, fuck yeah, guys. Uh, spoilers in three, two. Mark's just like pretending to know. Yeah, I don't give. Yeah, a I know that. One. I know that move. This Swing one. away, Meryl. Meryl. Swing away. Wait, it's a full shot, you fuck. It's your first shot. You gotta take a full shot. That is a full shot, you What? Fuck. What? Oh my god. <laughs> my mine's fucking on the rim. Good, cheers. Yo, why don't you spill it all on the <laughs> table before you take this shot, Mark? Thanks. Oh my god. Drinking, drinking right out of mason jars. Mark is Howard Hughes. <laughs> What does that even mean? <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? Because <laughs> cause Howard Hughes used to piss into mason jars. Really? Because Why? he got sick. Because he was a germaphobe. Well, he used f- to piss. Wait, what? Huh? Oh, yeah. That's weird. Yeah. We shouldn't talk about this. Let's that's talk why, about That's why fucking, he's Howard Hughes. Let's talk about Nope, guys. Fucking Dude, Mark, Ger- Mark Gerbino, <laughs> Howard Hughes. Uh, guys, I'm. let's talk about Nope. How about it? They're Mark. almost the same amount of letters. It's no coincidence. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Let's shit. Let's talk about Nope. One thing I... Uh, talk on the mic, you fucking huh? pleb. <laughs> <laughs> one thing oh, I shit, really... Oh. Go. All right, Come on! Going. One thing I really shit. enjoyed um, is, like I said before, that it would take, like, the... Jordan Peele, like, took, like, common ideas, like, around, like, the lore of UFOs or, you know, real-life accounts and quotations... Like of like don't if you lo- when you look up at it people will like look up at it like I look at the, when they see a UFO they're like yeah I looked up at it and then I you know, I went into this trance man or something like oh I didn't even think to take a picture because I was just looking at it and like the awe of seeing something in the sky like that yeah and, like how in this he used like don't look at it because then that's how it knows it's gonna eat you and or, or like the way it would yeah the way it would uh, turn off technology is also like a common thing that people report and I liked how he used those common things and kind of made unique premises out of them and do you think dramatically. because it's uh is that the whole is that its mouth or its eye that that the ufo has its mouth it like sucks people into it or something that was pretty horrifying dude yeah also yeah, do yeah. you like that i would have to look at uh eyes even if they're inanimate to get the yeah because it's an animal Ooh. shit wait what do you mean i would have to look at eyes because he- Eyes an animal, you Bro, fucks. You piece of shit, you motherfucker. You said <laughs> eyes. You can't say. Your no, own. you said animal. You said eyes. Oh, yeah, bitches. Well, what yeah. do you mean? By <laughs> That's eyes? what we think of. Take four <laughs> shots. He goes. <laughs> 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 what do you mean by eyes? So, like, so the 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 big circle that he sucks like uh, stuff into. <laughs> <laughs> Pause behind the sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, where's my Johnny so Walker? Oh, I got it. The big circle that he just so gulps, the globbers, big, and oh, the big circle that, into. That, he, that he sucks people into. Um, is that how the UFO visualizes things, or is that just its mouth? No, I think it just like senses stuff, senses things. It's just like on a different level. Also, when I go get the Johnny Walker, I want you to talk about it a second. The coolest part, in my opinion, of this fucking movie was the physics they used on that UFO. On how it, like, it made no noise and it glided over the landscapes. That's dope as fuck. I was silent in the clouds. That's probably the coolest part about this movie is, is the physics they use mm. for the CGI for the UFO. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I liked um, about the the when he, the way he like he feeds like the 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 horses to the UFO or whatever. Um, That's a shot and a half. See, bitch. I could have not said it, but I just said it because I'm not a pussy. Um, but he feeds the, uh, or the, the horses eat 
<laughs> the horses get eaten by the damn UFOs, right? And uh, Daniel Kalula's character is selling them to Steven Yoon. And in the beginning of the movie, and then when we see the the big thing where everybody gets all sucked up at that event, they were going to release a horse out and the UFO is going to eat it. And that yeah. would be like the spectacle that they would see. And so he's killing all the horses that he's buying from Daniel Kalula. And when Daniel Kalula goes, hey, I was thinking about buying some of those horses back from you. Steven Yoon goes, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah we, we can we, talk, we about talk about that. that. So yeah. that was like a nice little callback that I enjoyed. You know what I thought they were going to do, which I think I would have liked a lot more, is if um, what what was his, what was Daniel's actual name in the in the movie? OJ Simpson. No, it was just no. OJ something. It was OJ. It was, it was OJ. OJ. But it was OJ Simpson. And what was the name of uh? Is it Yoon? Young his last name? Yoon. Yoon. What's his What's his name in the movie? Poppy McSqueezy. <laughs> I don't know. I, Poppy, Honestly, I was like, it would have been a lot better if Poppy his, McSqueezy. His whole, his whole storyline was cool. Well, we'll, we'll get to that. Like, we'll get to that. Yeah. I think it would have been cool, though, if in the reveal when he was going to release the horse, mm-hmm. that it was going to be revealed to us that he was feeding the UFO people and that he was like, just kept getting oh. crowds of people to feed the UFO. I was like, that would have been cool. Like an evil guy. But they, but they didn't do that. Also, in that well, scene, how how fucking scary was it watching those people be, uh, be digested? Yeah, yeah. You know, when the lady's the in there, I was like, that's yeah. the, I was like, I don't want to meet aliens now. Yeah, but yeah. the the one thing that I don't think, it would make sense if they changed that. Like, it might be more sinister for some reason, but the reason it wouldn't make sense if he was feeding people is because um the whole thing is like, Thematically, the reason that the the monkey is in there, if there's only there's only a thematic and character. There's no plot connection to the monkey being in there, right? Yeah. So, um, uh, so his character like had this extreme experience with the monkey. Hold on, no. he had this extreme experience with the monkey, right? And I think that that is connected to the story thematically by he wasn't able to control this crazy animal with all this, like you know, with this with it, like this immense like like strength. And it just killed everybody. Yeah. He had just had to sit there and do nothing about it. But the way he, you know, has that spectacle, he's sort of like taming this giant beast in the sky and the way he feeds them horses. And it's kind of like, I think, compensating for the lack of control he had over that well, when he was little. That's what that was a theme in the movie where um the father, I don't know his name, I think he just called him Pop or something. Heath David. But he he Sergeant Foley he kept, in Modern he, Warfare. He too. kept talking about the ghost, like the uh the horse, how oh look at him out there, thinks he owns the place. He can't be tamed. The monkey couldn't be tamed either, and neither could be the UFO. So that yeah. was the whole point. They're wild animals. Yeah. Also, in the monkey scenes, um, they kept having popping balloons, which ended up being the thing that killed the UFO. Yeah. yeah. yeah um, I didn't realize. I forgot about but, but the monkey, the whole monkey thing was a little weird. Also, the pop... Well, I thought it was yeah. very good. I thought it was, like, extremely... You're sitting there going, shit, shit, shit. Definitely. Yeah. The, the monkey was more scared than The cool than the thing about the balloons okay. is I actually... Not a reference to Boogie Nights, but I saw a similarity to Boogie Nights. Because when the the monkey's going around and the balloons are popping, do you remember that scene in Boogie, like one of the greatest movie scenes ever, where they go to Alfred Molina's house to sell him cocaine, and yeah, the little Chinese yeah. guy is like throwing the the firecrackers in the background. Oh, so shit, he's yeah. just like waving a gun around, and the Chinese guy in the background just and boom, like and they're yeah, just like yeah. jumping. It kind of reminded me of that. It was a very similar technique to build a uh, suspense and tension. There, like, like random popping yeah. too. There's yeah. no. That's cool. Yeah, I didn't so, even think about that too. So let me tell you why the spoiler, no, the trailers ruined it for me though. I um, I love it. I love alien movies. I think it's so cool. And I, but I li- actually like seeing the aliens, seeing what they do. Like um, Close Encounters. The coolest part is when you meet the aliens. Uh, e- even though in like World of Worlds, the closest, the coolest part isn't seeing the aliens. It's a lot of the other shit. But seeing the aliens, holy fucking shit! There they are. Um, all these movies where it's like um, there's p- other people out there, and if they're sinister, fuck, it's scary. If they're if they're nice, like Close Encounters, oh, that's really cool. But it's kind of like weird that the government's hiding you, you from it and all that. There's a lot going on. But in the trailers, it, remember that scene where the kids dressed up as aliens to scare the guy? Yeah. They showed that part in the trailers. Oh, really? And I was like, bro, this is fucking freaky. Because they showed in the trailers one of the masked kids, like like, almost above the, the fence, like, the gate, like, walking sideways. And I was like, that's fucking scary. Imagine, like, being in the middle of a farm and seeing an alien, like, or something you don't know, like, a cryptid something doing like that. that yeah. So when that part of the movie... A what? A cryptid. Like, like a chupacabra or a Bigfoot, kind of like a... A cryptid? Just, what's the crypt mean? Like, what's that? What's the etymology of that word? I don't know the etymology, but it's uh. basically just, like, a mystical being. Um... But so, imagine seeing something like that. that. That's fucking scary. And in the trailer, they showed that, and I was like, I can't wait. And when that scene came in the movies, I'm like, oh, shit, it's starting. Mm-hmm. And 
that was a scary scene. Like that was actually scary when that when that alien, even though it was a kid, like stood up and looked at him. I'm like, fuck, yeah, that's scary. And then when I turned, when I was like, wait, this isn't gonna be the aliens. And it showed it was just kids in costumes. At that point, the movie wasn't as fun for me anymore. So it took all of like what thirty minutes, forty minutes for the movie to be, for me to be like over for me. I was like, okay, because really? because that's what I think is cool about aliens is like the actual aliens. Now I'm not trying to discount <clears throat> the creativity of making the UFO an actual thing, like a, like an animal or something, but uh, that's not what I find interesting about extraterrestrials. So that's what kind of kind of ruined it for yeah, me. And I think using, it was, you keep using the word extraterrestrial. Like the, yeah, actual aliens. That oh, sorry, sorry. You know you're right because it would still be considered an extraterrestrial. So why, like, but you're saying like that's uh, not humanoid humanoid aliens. I think that's cool. No, but I'm saying I'm saying like that's not what I think of when I think of extraterrestrial. But there's no evidence other than the fact that UFO UFOs are generally, especially in sci-fi, are connected with. Aliens. There's no indication that this is anything extraterrestrial. Yeah, but this movie. is fiction, though. So I think that's what I like about the whole the, the <clears throat> narratives when it talks about aliens and UFOs and stuff. I like that it's like, oh, it's alien humanoid beings inside of a spaceship. I th- right. I think that's cool. I think it's scary. I think it's mind boggling. It gets my you know imagine imaginative juices going. Like I like that. Right. Um. And because I saw it in the trailer, I was like. Fuck yes. Yes. Yeah. I'm excited. See, part of me all like ag- agrees. Like I would have wished like part of me wishes like oh I want to see somebody else's take on like aliens or whatever. But the the like the kind of like one of the pitfalls what? Alien. So he already somebody didn't somebody already get you on that? I don't think so. Do you guys have alien written down? No. Who cares? Speak fine. Um <laughs> But one of the things like the pitfalls of having like these, you know, intelligent a- aliens is once you reveal them. The movie becomes like the mystery behind them becomes very, very uninteresting. And you have to present them in a way that suggests even more mystery behind their appearance in the movie. So I think if this movie, like, like, for example, like if you look at, um, you know, like a movie like The Abyss or, mm-hmm. or some shitty, like all these, you know, shitty alien movies in the 90s, whenever they show the aliens, you're like, all right, cool. Now what? Like the, the mystery, like showing that, like it's like showing the mystery kind of, uh, um, like shrinks it, dilutes, in a way. The, dilutes it yeah. in a way. So I liked in this one how it wasn't like these, you know, little gray, like gray guys. It was just like sort of like this animal or whatever. Yeah. But obviously, obviously, part of me wants there to be like an explanation. But if there was an explanation or more of a thing that you wanted, I think it would lend for you not to think about the movie as much because part of it, we have no idea where this thing came from. Yeah. Has it? Why was the cloud not moving? Like it just makes you think. Yeah, does it have technology or does it just is it organic completely? Right. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, like I said, this is I'm not trying to discount the creativity. I'm not trying to discount like how this is totally new and different. Um, and it's a good movie. I had fun. I and, and I think it's something. Good I, movie. You give it a six point seven. Yeah, but our rate, you and me have different rates. We have to like come up with like a, a staple. You're one of those fucking weirdos who gives fives. Like, oh, great ha- movie, five. We have to have like a staple screenshot rating system. Yeah, my rating system. Yeah, we'll Because we'll, I we'll come talk, up with every we'll single one. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about I that. I came up with Stratospheler's Cumulus. Yeah, that was genius. Grog okay. Cumulus. Yeah, but Grog was Cumulus. When you, gungus, still, gungus. when you still saw that scene, did you still enjoy it up to the point where it's revealed? Yes. Yes, I still, I still got the goosies. From yeah, that, that scene. was a scary scene. Yeah. What, when they went in the when the, when the aliens, aliens stand yeah. up, even though it's a prank, I still in that moment I was like, "Holy You're fuck!" Still like, also, shit. also, in my mind, I was like, "It's way too early for a reveal like this," but okay, like it's cool. And then I was kind of glad that it was just a prank because also I was like, not ready for the main thing yet. Because the the masks that they used to be aliens were so different than an alien I've ever seen in cinema before. It's like they had a large, large forehead that was very smooth and small eyes. Like that's what their masks were. So I was like, "Oh, this is like cool." And, well, they, all, and they were like wearing gorilla suits. Like they were furry. I feel like those suits were like are very archetypal. Archetypal of like an it alien. is archetypal. Like they have the big heads and the small eyes, but that's something you'd see in like Fire in the Sky, nineteen ninety three. Something you'd see in like um, what was the other movie? With the owls, oh, I, I think know. that was the uh, the fourth kind. I think was owls. One of the movies is owls, but like they had an owly kind of appearance. Those a- those aliens. No, so, but I, there was just there was a difference about them because they kind of looked like uh, like sunken in skulls in in some ways. But um, I, I I think they were cool, and I was ready to see a new form of alien. But um, and that's why I keep saying like the the trailers kind of ruined it for me. And then about the tension about yeah okay. 
sure, horror movie build that tension. That's the point. It's not a horror movie. We though. get it. It's it's a what's it called? Um, thriller. Thriller. Thank you. It's like but anything that's supposed to be unpleasant, build attention. I get it. We get it. Um, and if I don't think about that while I'm watching the movie, you succeeded. If I think about that while I'm watching the movie, it didn't succeed as well as it could have. Um, and once, and that's why I, I don't blame Jordan Peele, I, obviously, right? But I, I do blame the trailers. Um, because if I didn't see the trailers, I think the tension would have been a lot better for me. Like, as soon as I see the UFO turn into, like, this jellyfish thing, I would have been kind of like, hey, I don't really care anymore. That was... The trailers? No, no, it was not in the trailers. But in the movie, like if I didn't see any of the trailers, I would have been I would have been hyped the entire way through until it turned into a jellyfish. Mm-hmm. Um, but because I thought it was gonna be uh humanoid aliens and I found thirty minutes in it wasn't gonna be, I it, it kind of upset me. Yeah, but you're that's kind of like an like an expect like yeah, it's expectation. Yeah, that, those are expectations set up by the trailers. Yes, that's what I'm saying. The trailers ruined it for me. But then the movie, yeah, but the movie did something. Hold on. Go ahead. Go ahead. So you're saying that because you thought. Did you take your shot by the way? No, you didn't. I took the first one. You didn't take the other. You're one. saying, be, let me try. I'm trying to like organize this in my brain. So you're saying because of the trailers. Yeah. It made you think it was gonna be one thing, and it wasn't. I thought it was gonna be. So w- you're disappointed that it wasn't that thing. You're right. So there, there's three. There's, there's like a three parter. Number one, I wanted it to be a certain way. Number two, the trailer showed me what I wanted. Number three, the movie was not that way. So I got my hopes up twice, and the third one was the movie was something entirely different. So I was like, ah, that sucks. Hmm. A lot of things. In Take your movie. shot too. There's a lot of things in this movie that are good that are different though. Like they kind of go against what you think is going to happen. Like I, w- I was thinking about this because I said before how I didn't really care much for that acting in some tense scenes but then I thought like maybe he's doing that on purpose like when he's in the car and the thing is right over him yeah and he's like he just opens up the door looks up closes it calmly goes nope like that is a scene where I would expect to be like oh shit oh shit oh shit but just because the character was like chill I felt myself like it was totally something that I wasn't expecting which is good and i mean if you're really going for the thrill then it's not good but you know what also what's cool about this movie like i think it's cool thinking about this movie afterwards too because it's like we can we can say this isn't a ship this isn't an alien ship this is a living being and that means that any other ufos and any any sightings and across monster like across yeah so it's like a a monster movie any (sighs) ding yourself He said monster. So any UFOs you find throughout the world, they are all this animal. Do they come from this planet? Do they come from outer space? The point, I said that weird, outer space. The point is these animals are hunting living, like organic beings on this planet and they're just around everywhere. It's like a swarm of bees, but like there's one, there's one and they're eating things. It's like a sky manta thingy. What? Like a manta. manta. Like a manta. Like a manta. Like a manta ray? ray? Yeah. I'm so upset I got to take another sky shot. Sky sand dollar. Yes, a sky dollar. <laughs> sky dollar. That's pretty cool. Yeah, but it's also a but it's also a, a Marxist, so it doesn't believe in the word dollar. <laughs> <laughs> just eating. He just like spits out the communist manifesto. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ! What what was the most? Oh, you want to see the th- you want to know the thing I saw in the in the Instagram thingy there? <clears throat> no, was, I had no idea. <laughs> I <clears throat> I had no idea. I didn't see anything of the, the what the big thing was. I thought it was just like, oh, there's a terrible cloud or something. But a then terrible I, cloud. And then like the day like hours before I went to see the movie, I'm like scrolling through Instagram and I just see this big UFO just swoop down. Mm. And I'm like, why are they why is it the first thing you see in the thing? Like you So just, you didn't know there's aliens <clears throat> at all? Well, I didn't think it would be aliens. Even though the trailer is nope, not of planet Earth. Oh, is that what that means? Yeah, well, but that's, that's not what it means. Just the, how I perceived it. But oh, Johnny's cool. Johnny's. So cool. It is true. I mean, he did say it in a, Bro, in a non a non Yo, you got to see Johnny's Reddit page. Holy shit! I've My never Reddit seen something page? so pretentious. He's on all the screenwriting subreddits, <laughs> film subreddits, and he's like talking about like as if he knows what he's talking. about. What's my about. username? I don't want to out you. I don't well, want. I don't no, want. No, 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 I don't want anyone to know. I'm sure. I, I'm okay, sure. I'll, I'm sure I'll, I can I'll, let five I'll, people know. I'll bleep it out in post. 
You didn't say anything. That's not <laughs> true. That's not Dude, true. That's that's messed up. It should not be that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's I'm wildly kidding. unpopular. That's wildly I have, I have I have negative a hundred thousand <laughs> karma. How dare you put your name as that? I'm done. Yeah, I'm done. <laughs> nope. But um what was I saying? I don't know. But I didn't I, I assumed I, I assumed it wouldn't be like I assumed it'd be probably be something different. Because like I I I don't feel like Jordan Peele would just make an alien movie, like a serious one, mm-hmm. you know. Wait, say it again, sorry. You you wouldn't expect him to what? Make a serious one. We don't have to d- get dinged for it. How did you did you just looked at the thing? Are you am I dinging myself? What? It looked like you looked at it like you wanted well, me to. Because you press were asking me to say something again, so I'm like, wait, did I get close? No, to no, I just didn't hear you because I'm fucking five you know shots I liked? in. I liked how the, that one character, the guy I don't who drink. the guy who worked at the movie Best Buy, um, so it's like Fry Angel. Buy. Yeah, I liked how he kind of just. Think he's cool. I, I like how he stuck around, but he like wasn't in any of the trailers or anything. I liked how he was a good character. Yeah, I like how the except for that weird. I didn't like the one guy, the cinematographer, guy. who's who's just wearing all these tattered rags. Yeah. And he's like trying Johnny, to Johnny, that's fucking you. Pretend. He's like that he's guy like I'm was tr- a little pretentious. It's you. That guy sucked. Yeah. No, he's not. No, 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 no. If we're talking about filmmakers that wear tattered rags, it's fucking you. Yeah, but I wear like regular clothes. This Show guy, me one shirt you guy, have that doesn't have a hole in this it. This guy was just wearing a bunch of blankets. Yeah, and like he would try to work like... the camera and the blankets like blowing all over. <laughs> it's like if he was an experienced cameraman in her. He wouldn't be wearing wait, that Wait, stuff. what'd you say? <laughs> cameraman in her. Cameraman in her. <laughs> cameraman in her. No, seriously, though. He was he was totally just like, purple people later. Yeah, I like that song, though. That? Oh, yeah, if somebody weird. does that, There's if a I'm song. sitting at the table and somebody starts doing that, after like the first, the third line, I'm like, all right, yeah. stop. Can we have a regular conversation? It was a long hair. I forget the, the song, but it was tailed. purple people eater, Mr. Purple people don't eat me. Yeah. Like that song. I know that song. So, so... What would you cl- so? This not if it's not a ship, it's not a bird, a nest. It's a sky it's dollar a nest. Sky the cloud? Are you talking about the cloud? Oh, no, just yeah. no, no. The actual oh, the, thing. the animal. Yeah. yeah like, was, uh, what would you classify it as? Jean sky, jacket. A, a sky squid. Jean jacket. A sky squid. It was a jean jacket. It was a lot like a sky that. squid. Why did he say jean? I don't know because jean jacket represented something like a beast that couldn't be tamed or beast that could be tamed. I don't know, but that was kind of a dumb moment where they're like. It was like, man, this motherfucker is called Jean Jacket. And yeah, everybody yeah. kind of like looks at each other like uncertainly. <laughs> it's like, sure, I guess we can call him Jean Jacket from now on. He's but ser- suck us up into the air and yeah, right. kill us. So just, just like Jean Jacket, used to do. <laughs> just old Jean just Jacket, like that regular horse used to do. <laughs> so old Jean I, Jacket. I gave my favorite. Suck me real good. <laughs> yeah. okay. oh, what? Man. What'd you say? I love, don't you just remember when you were little and you used to take Jean Jacket into the stable and you, you let him suck you up real good? Suck you up real nice. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> What now? So oh, I, my favorite, my favorite part of the movie that wasn't like a big part of the movie, and I'm gonna ask you guys to uh, give me yours, yeah. was like I said, the physics of the UFO, like how like it was so quiet and it just glided like water over the mountains and it just went through the air. Like I thought that was cool. I also want to add that like if it is that all these UFOs are just like living animals that eat things across the planet and they somehow look like technological, like I think that I think it is a cool concept. I think it's like holy shit, like that's a that's a living thing. That's not a a machine that's a living thing. But before you say what you're going to say, what? please tell me what's your favorite thing about the movie that's not a huge major plot point. That's like a small little like editing thing, CGI thing, fucking the way they acted, the way their character quirk was. Like what's something that you liked about it that was like, oh, that's, that's kind of cool. The, the execution. Because even if there's problems in the screenplay, the execution of basically just like, oh, it's almost Hitchcock, like a Hitchcock movie in a sense because the technique is so, is like, is so so precise and like he'll just like put shots together and stick on them around stick around on them for just a long enough where it, it rings out this much tension but then doesn't get around where the shot gets stale and then it ruins the tension or yeah, something like yeah, that. Yeah. yeah, the cinematic technique I thought was really good. The execution was excellent. I liked his little jab that he had at um that that company that like talks shit about people. What was it? TMZ. Yeah, dang yourself, pal. Bro, bro. <laughs> oh, no. No, I did like that. I'm ja- so... I, I well, you're not, you're not going to have any trouble going to sleep I'm now. I'm so fucked right now. <laughs> like... But you you guys look like you guys look like one person. You have to make that a. You have to make that one of the things. I'm so fucked. A- every right? time, at, every at, when when somebody on the podcast gets to five shots, we you have to di- press that button that goes. Oh, I'm wait. so, so fucked, fucked right now. Fuck you guys. Who has the least amount of shots? I you took piece two. Of shit. 
Danny. Go ahead, Danny. Also, show me your penis. Show me your penis right now. Show me your penis. Yeah, we should have one of those. <laughs> but he said it's you going. I am so fucked right now. <laughs> no, I'm I, actually drunk. I really did enjoy that sequence Stop with the me TMZ with your foot. guy. You know how Mark? I, you know how to tell when Mark gets drunk? I'm not putting the. You like to on be you. around him more when he's drunk. You do not like to be around me no matter what I do. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> My theory has no, been neutralized. Can we actually talk about that TMZ scene? Because that was actually pretty funny. Yeah, that, the was, guy that shows was just up. a cool sequence where they're yeah. like, what happens when an electric bike hits a hits a electronic magnetic yeah. field? He's just sitting there going. Also, that wouldn't happen, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> yeah, the the like, brakes like, don't engage. Camera, the brakes don't engage when the bike shuts off. If they're electric? Yeah, I don't think the brakes just like, oh, stop. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I just, I like that he flew off and just, he was, yeah. he was still just like, where's my Wait, camera? Just take a picture. Hurry up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Are you but, seeing it? But also you talked about the UFO looked like technology up close. Uh, when you get up close, like you start to see almost like yeah. a, like a manta ray or something. You see, there's like a little, like there's like a little divot in the front of it. Yeah. Like it, where it's like, oh, this is like a weird oh, animal. You dummy. You were supposed to take a shooter, not a shot. Oh, really? Just take another shot. No. <laughs> I take half of a shooter then. Split it with Johnny. Yeah. But no, that's I'm fine. so don't worry about it. I hate you guys. <laughs> that's fine. I'm not doing it. What else? What else? What else? What else? Um What what would you okay, if you rated this the way you rated this, what's another movie that's another uh, UFO alien whatever movie that's on par with this movie? Oh shit, look how fucking quickly he picked up that phone, man. I've watched a lot. There's I've, like one where this I've kid's just like in his house movie. and he's getting He's getting. I can't remember. It's I gotta like get a more movie. Well, you know what? I, I'll say this: a lot of UFO movies, especially like there's this movie called Dark Skies, which is like a UFO horror, yeah. which works because yeah. that that concept is very strong. But it's like the most frustrating movie of all time, where everybody's like, "Oh, we've been being haunted by aliens for three days. Let me go turn all the lights off in the house." Yeah. Like, is that the one where he he executes the dab? The, yeah, he, yeah, he <laughs> does. He does this at the end. <laughs> yeah, wait, for real? Yeah, yeah, where yeah, he executes yeah. the, like, the dab? <laughs> he goes, where he, where he executes the dab? <laughs> That's because in the, in the UFO episode we did, that's how you said it. What, the dab? You said he executes a perfect dab. In that <laughs> oh, I thought you meant the dad. No, that's, um, no. that was Skyline. Oh, Skyline, Don, Skyline. Where, where Donald Fazion goes to shoot uh, a lock off of a door. Yeah. And he goes to shoot it, and he, go, he goes like this. He goes... Yeah, he does like a that, perfect dad. 2010 or 11, he did a perfect dad. Yeah. Dude, that movie was ahead of its time. But um, even though it was really, 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 really bad. I liked it, though. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> you really always say that about things that are good. Let me see about... Johnny th- Cruz hates fun. Wait, you guys keep talking. I want to look up my uh, my di- my movie diary. Well, what about you, Danny? What's something you would rate equal to this? Like, w- w- have you, Do you watch a lot of UFO movies? My memory bank for <laughs> these movies are not that... Large, but I feel like Dark Skies is the one I was talking about. That's like the kid <laughs> in the house. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I, I I really enjoy that one. I remember watching that one. I haven't seen a lot of UFO movies. Yeah, me either, honestly. But if I let me, let me think, if I had to to cue something up where it was like, yeah, this is equivalent to Nope. Fuck, man, that's that's hard. Not because Nope is so good that it can't compare to anything, but it's it's so different. It yeah, is so yeah. different. I, I like how it had a little bit of that Western. No, no, no. It, I got so. it. What signs? Never signs. I think signs, signs is okay. I think signs is an. It, I think signs is a good equivalent to this movie. Also, Jordan Peele is a higher paid uh, M Night Shyamalan. I think I think he's he I think he's like oh twist at the end. Do you think this movie these movies are better than M Night Shyamalan's first three movies? What are his first? If you three? go to Sixth Sense, Unbreakable, and Signs, Get Out, Us, and Nope. Well, okay, Get Out had such a cultural backing, so that's kind of an unfair like comparison. I mean, like there was so much that movie that was that was so so good, um, but I think. What's called Sixth Sense? It, it, you kind of can't relate any movie to that because that is such a cultural movie where it's like, I see, I see dead people. Spoiler alert. Um, and also, I didn't see Unbreakable, so I can't comment on that. But uh, Signs, the ending was pretty shit. But I love who uh, Mel Gibson. I love Mel Gibson. I think he's a he's great. At everything he does, I really really like Signs. I think it shows um, you know the relationship between a father and his children, especially in such hard times like uh, an alien invasion in the death of. Uh, a uh, loved one. I love science, and I think science is a good equivalent to Nope in the sense where it's like I get the overall same kind of emotions from it. I do get a little bit, I obviously get more emotional in science, but I 
I don't know. I, I kind of would rate them the same. Um, but I both, I like, I like signs, I think, a lot more than Nope. But would I say Jordan Peele's first three is better? But. <laughs> but. <laughs> I'll fuck you up. Actually, you probably kick my ass. But. <laughs> would I say Jordan Peele's first three is better than Shyamalan's Shil- Shil- first three? Um, I see Jordan Peele's second, so I can't say much about that. Um, I would say n- no by maybe a 0. .5. A 1 or a 0. .5, I would say no. But I do think, as a standalone, um, Get Out is, I don't know, Get Out is so good. And M. Night Shyamalan, has be- I feel like it's become uh, so predictable that it's hard to enjoy his movies as thoroughly. But um, I don't know. It's hard. To, it's, that's a hard question to answer. Um, so what's your movie? For UFO movies, I think, well, the UFO, Alien, like they're kind of like, a UFO movie is different from an Alien movie. Um, but I would say... That like probably the best UFO movie is Close Encounters because there's not good there's not a lot yes. of good there's not a lot of good ones, um and that's not even like that's like a that's like a soft like best because like I think that's just like a really good movie but not yeah. like or like just like a solidly good movie not like a great movie and yeah. then I really like District Nine which is probably like one of the best Alien movies even though it's a solid. Were they gonna make a second good. one of that? I don't know, um probably maybe because it may, probably made a lot of money and got nominated for Best Picture. I think maybe it I didn't. No it didn't idea. get nominated for this picture. I got. Bad. I don't know. I have no it idea. It won some sort of award. I remember having like the TV in it. So that was another yeah. cool, well, like different something. take on aliens. You know, that was cool. Yeah, that was the that most was unique cool. take on aliens. Yeah, that I've seen Under the Skin was very good. Fantastic Planet was very, very, very. I good. watched. Uh, you're gonna hate me, but I watched that on my cell phone. Martin Scorsese has passed away. <laughs> um, wait, no, I'm just saying that. Do the line, honest. do the line, do the line. What? What line? The the you can't get the on your cell I mean, phone. Whatever he says. Oh, you with David Lynch. You will never in a million trillion years get the same experience of a film off your fucking iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> fucking ridiculous. Oh my god. <laughs> nice. So That's okay, but so cool. so so try to match up this movie with one other. With one other. Nah. Also The Vast of Night nah. is a good movie. Oh, ooh, I'm gonna recommend that. What's that? Match this movie up with one other. What do you mean match like, it up? That where it's like, okay, I feel the way I feel about this movie is equivalent to the way I feel about this movie. But it has to be a UFO <sighs> alien movie. Oh fuck. That's a hard question to answer. Well it's like because not a lot there's not a lot of good ones. Like I've seen Fantastic uh Forbidden Planets actually actually really good. But this is not like that at all. But that's kind of hard because I've seen like all of them, not all of them, but I've seen like sixty percent of them that are worth watching, and they're all like bad to okay. There's like a few good ones. What makes a good UFO movie? Go ahead, Danny. What? Uh, what did you personally think about the Western stuff? That, oh yeah, like the really hard Western like tries at certain things. Well, in, in in Nope. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. The, in, like story wise or plot wise or archetypical or whatever the word is, it doesn't really feel like a Western, but like but in, the, in the feel or like the mood, it's, it sort of feels like a Western sometimes. Mm-hmm. I heard when you I, say that. Like, yeah. Like, I feel like I wanted you to expand on that more because like you're, I feel like Western is like your favorite thing. I don't know. Maybe not your favorite well, thing. But, but also there's like a few, there. there's a few shots where I say it feels like, like there's a few shots that's a very common shot in the Western where it, it, um, uh, it'll, uh, what do you call it? It'll track left. Or right, does it? it? It'll track horizontally as as we follow the character walk onto the street because they're in the old west town, and you see Daniel Kalula walk onto the street, and we're tracking uh, along with him, and you see his sister, show like you know, put focus in the background. That's a very right. common western shot, especially in that kind of town. That's where it kind of felt like a western and stuff. I don't know how that relates to UFOs or anything like that. There there might be a connection there where he's like, oh, I wanted to make it feel like a western here because they're like you know they're. Does, Whatever, do you know but. Jordan Peele has the same crew for his, all his films? Cool. No, does he? Oh, I don't know. Because, like, if the director of photography, like, if he, like, has this... No, he didn't. He had a different... The, the director of photography, Hoyt Van Hoima, whatever his name is, he was the uh, cinematographer on Tenant and Dunkirk. He's been doing Christopher Nolan's movies recently. Hmm. All right. So th- I think this is his first time working with that cinematographer. Do you want to do... They did a lot of, they did a lot of uh, night photography... Um, where they shot day for night. There's actually a scene where I can tell because they wanted to get... Because if you shoot at night, you, you can't get the sky. Yeah. It's impossible. Yeah. So um, what they did is they just shot at night and would light him very heavily so that the shadows wouldn't be that prevalent. Um, gotcha. Well, they shot in the daytime and then lit him so that the shadows would be diffused um, and diluted, and then it looked like it was sort of at night where everything's just like kind of dark and blue. But you can still tell a little bit, but it still looked really good. 
Do you want to go to movie recommendation? Yeah, my movie recommendation. It's called The Vast of Night on a... On a, on a, it's on Amazon Prime. It's a very low budget. I think the budget's like 400000 But I think it's a very... It's a period. It's 1950. It's like 1950s UFO movie, which is like kind of a well-worn subject, but I think it's like a cool little uh, movie. Um, on Letterboxd, let me see what I said. I saw this movie January 13th, 2021. I said, I admire the movie uh, for being able to have its own unique spin. Um on a familiar story within the confines of its very low budget. Um, uh, I like, I said, the, I said the strongest parts were the two leads who are more entertaining than, you know, them reading radio sounds that are coming from the sky for like a lot of the movies. So a lot of movies, just them like being like, Oh, look at this radio stuff. Yeah. And you're like, wow. Okay. But I thought it was a very really good example of semi do it yourself movie making. So, I Which, by the way, you know what I've been thinking about recently? This is kind of off topic, so I'm sorry, everybody who doesn't give a shit. 2019. Um, with In terms of movie making uh, and, like, filmmaking and student films, uh, indie films or whatever, um, I forget who said it, but they were sa- – I think it was uh, – who's the comedian? Andrew Schultz? I think it was Andrew. Schultz. Schultz, whatever. I think it was him that was saying Schultz. that um, one of the – and, like, it's like, am I really going to listen to a comedian? Like, I don't fucking know, but – He's in entertainment, so you should listen to him more than you should listen to me. He was saying how one of the reasons why like people like companies like Netflix is like is like dying, and slowly, eventually, other companies were going to go out too, is because you got people that are willing to do independent work for essentially free mm-hmm. on YouTube. You know, like, and you can get like sponsors, you can get AdSense, and you can make really big, amazing stuff on YouTube. And I don't want to get super off the rails, but like stuff with like NFTs and stuff, where like. If I and I don't like NFTs, but this one made sense to me. I just can't stop talking about them. If if you like, I think the NFT is stupid, but I think donating to a filmmaker you like to make a film you want to see is essentially the same thing. Mm-hmm. I think we're gonna see more of that where it's like, explain, oh, I don't know what that. Okay, means. so so if there, so let's say Johnny Cruz is on YouTube and he wants to make a, um, Gil Custer's rifle. Okay, and. Made up. Everyone knows. Made up title. Everyone knows Johnny Cruz. Okay, I've seen his films before. Um, I'm excited to see his films again, but he wants to have a bigger budget. I'm willing to donate Johnny a uh, hundred dollars. Yes, to everybody on the internet do that. I'm willing to donate to Johnny a hundred dollars, but I want to get a contract that says for every hundred dollars he makes, I get one dollar of that. So that's what it. That's what an and the NFT would be the contract essentially. So you're saying it's the same uh, investment. It, yeah, it's, yeah. Inv- investment structure, exactly. but it's, NFT. You're not saying a movie and an NFT are the same thing. No, no, that's so not what I'm like, saying. Because I thought that's what you were saying for a second, and I was about to be like, No, that is not what I'm saying. About. What I'm saying is, I think we're going to see a lot more of that in the future. How we're going to be able to see more independent movies that have very, very large budgets. I mean, like YouTube channels like uh, Wendigo are doing it. Um, a couple other are doing it. Like so I think we're gonna see a lot more of that. I'm very excited for a lot of more independent you talked things. Talked about made. you talked about Andrew Schulz and comedians. They say that um comedians are supposed to be like modern day philosophers. Okay. But I think that's very disrespectful to modern day philosophers. <laughs> it's an old Norm McDonald joke for you there. Yep. Rest in peace. Let's go into word reveal. My words are This is a long one. We went over an hour. Yeah, it was a good one. A good episode. That was a good one. My words are I, animal, alien, ship, and horse. Oh, I should have got you on that. On what? I wrote movie. Movie? I put monster, get out, clouds, or cloud us. How many was that? I movie, don't know. movie, monster. Oh, I got you on I almost got all five. Shit. Bro, I I'm Monster, Get Out, Cloud. Us movie. Go ahead, Danny. I did TMZ, EMP, UFO, UAP, and Monkey. Yes, that's another thing. There, 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 not that there was a US, U, uh, UAP in this movie, but they didn't explain, like, oh, an electromagnetic pulse. It sends out a thing that, you know, like, it knocks out all the electricity. Like, they've been doing in movies for, like, the last 40 years. It's like, you don't have to explain. Everybody knows what an EMP is. You don't have to keep explaining that. Yeah, exactly. We've all played MW2. We yes. All know. Speaking of MW2. E-M-P! No fucking way. MW2. I'm, no, kidding. Can't, I'm totally kidding. I'm totally kidding. I'm no. totally kidding. Oh, wait. You already read your word. Yeah, I'm yeah. totally kidding. Um, you freaked speaking, out, though. You were like, what? Speaking of MW2, Keith David, the dad, is is Sergeant Foley. Soldier, mm. get over here and pick up that rifle. He's the he's the voice. That's hilarious. Yeah. What up? Guys, this is a great episode. 
Yeah, that was, a, fun. that was a good one. That was a good one. Um, I wish, they, I wish like at least forty people could watch it. <laughs> yeah, let's let's shoot for at forty least, guys. Forty. Let's shoot for forty Yo, likes. If we if we get three likes on this podcast, <laughs> we'll do another one next week on the Gray Man. When are we doing the Gray? Because we, me and Mark, both watched the Gray Man. Don't yeah. say you did it. You you watched it. Yeah. Okay. Did you like it? I oh, know I didn't watch it yet. <laughs> I didn't watch it either. I got home fucking I, four hours I ago. I watched Armis is in it. It's going to be big. It's going to be I'm going to watch yes. it tonight. I'll watch Vanity it tonight. Armis. That's going to be a very interesting podcast. We're, I'm going to watch it tonight. I want to be on it. And, and what do you okay. want to do it? As soon as possible. We have to do the boys, too. Yes. Before it gets oh, too old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You should, dude, we should just knock them out in one day. Want to do the boys right? No, Dan, Danny's got to go to fucking yeah, band practice. What time do you have to leave? I'll Nerd. I'll see what I got Nerd. We could just knock out a 30-minute boys episode. Let's do it. If Maybe. I'll see. I'll see. I'll see. All right, let's uh, guys. You're gonna cut this we'll, stuff out. No, 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 guys. We'll see, we'll catch you on the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe, comment, like, Mark, whatever, and also uh, donate uh, so we can get we can get Mark some. Put your Venmo. D. Say your Venmo. Yeah, Venmo me at uh, Johnny Cruz six six six, and uh, <laughs> we'll get Mark some vitamin D supplements. Fuck you, guys. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Bye. Peace. That was really good. I'm fucking. That was really fun. That was fun.